with the rates increasing, cyber hygiene getting better amongst our clients, you had a lot of additional capital come into the marketplace over the last two years. Um, and so what we're seeing now as we sit here, a much more friendly buying environment um, for REIT clients from a cyber liability perspective. Joining me today is Kevin Smith, Senior Vice President, Management, Cyber, and Professional Liability with NFB. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you having me. Now, you spoke during NARIT's insurance committee here at REITWISE. What would you say is the most important trend in the management and cyber liability insurance market? From a cyber liability perspective, two to three years ago, the cyber market was in a hard market. Um, this means premiums increasing, double digits, retentions going up. Um, and from there, there were a baseline security protocols that insurers were mandating our clients having in place in order to even get uh, cyber liability insurance. And so with the rates increasing, cyber hygiene getting better amongst our clients, you had a lot of additional capital come into the marketplace over the last two years. Um, and so what we're seeing now as we sit here, a much more friendly buying environment um, for REIT clients from a cyber liability perspective. Um, and that is even despite um, increased trends in frequency and some of the severity of these cyber claims, um, a lot of those cyber controls put in place and mandated to be put in place by our insurers have provided stability in the cyber marketplace. And what trends are you seeing in the REIT space as it relates to cyber risk insurance and mitigation? Uh, it comes down to ransomware and business email compromise. So when we look at ransomware, this is your classic expert hacker very financially motivated, um, intruding upon your system. That could be either through email, a phishing link, malware, um, and ultimately introducing software that shuts down the entirety of your systems, right? You cannot operate. And on top of having to respond to a ransomware demand of certain amount of money, which on average in 2023 was at about $875,000, um, what we're seeing in the read space specifically is the impact once your systems are down, what is the economical and business income impact, right, of, of shutting down those technology systems, shutting down the software and not being able to um, operate. And so you're getting hit on both the demand, right, as well as the business income loss side as it relates to ransomware. Um, next is the uh, business email compromise, where I kind of call that a marriage between traditional hacking and compromising the human element through social engineering. And so the example of this is a third party either mimicking a domain, an e email domain, one of our REIT clients, or um, even worse, actually getting the credentials right into that domain, um, getting into an employee's email box, picking the email thread they like, seeing that there's a vendor payment upcoming, and requesting right from a valid email account internally that bank account information changed to right their pockets. Um, and so those are the two main areas accounting for you know over 50% of the cyber claims that we're seeing in the read space. And finally, what is something that either CFOs or risk managers aren't thinking about right now as it relates to cyber risk that could pose an operational risk? I really think it's how dependent the real estate industry has become over the last five and 10 years on technology and software itself, right? And so um, everything from the property management um, uh, software, asset management software, asset deployment algorithms, um, as well as the security, right, and how to access these hard assets, all really being controlled by technology and software now. Um, and so uh, if any of that falters, right, that has big operational and reputational risk. I think the other side of that is it's not just your systems and your controls, but it's all the third party vendors that we may work with, right, or may act in that chain, right, of, of um, asset management. So um, it could be an HVAC provider, it could be an external property manager. Um, what are the minimum controls that are being required of them? What are the indemnification provisions? And how do you continually uh, monitor, right, that of not only your own systems, but of third parties?